Jacare, what's going on, man? What's up with this fight? Let's make this thing happen. Let's get this uh, done and over with. We were supposed to fight two times before. It was short notice. Now we got all the time in the world now. Uh, right now I'm number seven. You're number five. You lost your last fight. You're 0-4 in the top five. And I won my last fight, stopping a guy on a four-fight uh, knockout streak. You know, Dana White just said something about fighters trying to choose, uh, you know, fights that, that are good for them and bad for them. This ain't the place for you, you know what I mean? You have to make sure that you fight, you know? We got to get this thing going. I want the alligator. What's going on, man? Where's the alligator? Let's make this thing happen. UFC, let's make this thing happen. Mick, let's make this thing happen. We want the alligator. Um, the, listen, I love Stephen Wonderboy Thompson, um, but I'm not with him here at all. At the end of the day, it's mixed martial arts. What is mixed martial arts about? You're trying to opponent within the confines of the rules. Um, you're trying to knock your opponent out. You're trying to choke them unconscious. You're trying to break their arms. You're trying to, you know, hyperextend their arm to a point where it's so painful they have to tap to make you stop so you can't therefore say hold on a minute you can't kick me in the leg a certain way because it really hurts or you might damage me well every time he does one of those spinning wheel kicks to the face he could detach somebody's retina every time he does a spinning wheel kick to someone's face he could cause brain damage or he could break their jaw you know every time someone does a heel hook you can snap ligaments yeah. in the legs you know it's it's like listen if you sign up for this then then that's what you accept so you can't call for them to be banned because you know it hurt your leg that's the whole point of the business that's the game and as i say i'll reiterate once more i love stephen thompson i think he's amazing i think he's a great martial artist a great human being i love watching him fight I thought he was unlucky recently with the judges, but it was close, you know. But on this one, I'm just not with him. It's BS. Yeah. You know, I'd like to see less rules, you know. I mean, for example, you can't do the, the north to south elbows. Which yeah, 12 is, to 6. 12 to 6. It's bullshit, you know. I mean, you should be able to. Connor is fantastic in the beginning of a fight. Right. But, man, he gets to them third, fourth, and fifth rounds, and he takes, like, the Nate Diaz fight, the second fight. He, he becomes a lack of experience in handling those moments because he's so used to overwhelming people and taking them out early. Mm. What do you think that is? McGregor, look at his stats. It's all round one knockout, round one knockout, round, round, round two knockout. He's fast twitch, high leverage, left hand. Yeah. If you take him into deep waters, his... Fast twitch muscle fibers cannot metabolize. Look at him with Mayweather. Mayweather's so smart. He let him work. He let McGregor work for three rounds. Yeah. And you're getting excited. Keep working. Keep working. And when you have nothing left, I'm going to put you out. You know, he, that was such a brilliant strategy. Storyline going into this fight is that you're moving back up to 170 pounds. Why, uh, why did you decide to move back up from uh, lightweight? Oh, yes, sir. Um, well, my last few fights at 155, the weight cut's been pretty tough the last few pounds. My, my body kind of stopped sweating. I could, I could make the weight. It's just that I'd rather go out there and put on a great show and try to go out there and finish off my opponents. So I feel like 170 is more of a natural weight for me, and I'm looking forward to it. And with that said, how has training camp been this time around, not having to worry about those extra 15 pounds? Oh, training camp's been great. Uh, every, every single time, the past few times, the Team Alpha Mill has been awesome. So... I mean, my, my coach, Uriah Faber, uh, all the coaches at the gym, my teammates, everybody helps each other around, and it's great.
just got ran over by a car in Singapore. Stepped into the street and got the donk. <laughs> you you love Singapore. <laughs> Survivor. Survivor. <laughs> Uh, in terms of Stipe and D.C., before we get to the Singapore picks, we've seen a lot of line movement here, Kenny. Mm. Daniel Cormier, at one point about a week ago when I last checked, could be had around plus 165. Now he is plus 210. Whoa. So Stipe Miacic has gone from minus 185 to minus 265. So that is pretty significant movement, about 80 cents towards Stipe. And in terms of common opponents, they have won Roy Nelson. They beat him on points, both of them. DC has a lot of experience at heavyweight against big men, 13-0, beat Josh Barnett over 25 minutes. But I brought up the size thing to Ray Longo, and I know you're leaning towards Stipe, and we're not asking you to make a pick here today, but I do think size matters. And DC did have trepidation when he was asked to enter that Strike Force Heavyweight Grand Prix on short notice, you may recall. He stepped in for Alistair Overeem against Antonio Bigfoot Silva on about four or five weeks' notice. And at the time, he was quoted as saying, I don't know. You know, there's, I'm giving up a lot of height and reach and size, and obviously the results speak for themselves. But I think this is a huge ask, and I think maybe some of the sharp betters out there are starting to back the bigger guy a couple weeks out from this super fight. Yeah, listen, uh, the, Stipe has more advantages than DC. There's no doubt about it. You, you look at not only the fact that DC, uh, that Stipe, sorry, is the larger man, but look at what he's done at heavyweight, man, and all the guys that he's beaten. So. Yeah, I think uh, DC certainly has his hands full. But uh, one thing we can't forget is DC always finds a way to win. Besides John Jones, he has always found a way uh, to win. Um, he is a guy that will always make a fight competitive. We forget in that first fight against John Jones, he did go the distance. Um, and then in uh, and, and I had it three rounds to two for Jones. Um, right. And then in the second fight. Uh, he was doing great in that first round. I thought he won that first round. He was landing some big shots on Jones. Um, and then, of course, we, we didn't know what happened after that. We got caught with that kick. Um, Stipe isn't a big kicker. He doesn't look for a lot of high kicks. Um, I, I think as far as going against a guy who primarily approaches the game with boxing, it allows DC to get in on those legs a little bit easier than going against a guy who likes to knee a lot or kick a lot, um, mix things up. But Stipe really isn't that guy. Doesn't mean he's not dangerous. Stipe's still very dangerous. If he lands a shot, he can knock out anybody. Um, so that's where DC really needs to be careful. But I, I like the way that DC matches up against him as far as his ability to get in on those legs, utilize his wrestling, land some shots from the outside. Um, and, and I think DC, DC likes fighting at heavyweight because he feels like he has way more energy. He's happier in his training camp. He feels like he's going to be the faster guy out there. I think he will uh, against Stipe. Um, so there are some definite advantages for DC yeah. heading into this one as well. Uh, a tough fight nonetheless, though. I think you set up a lot of that well in terms of his path to victory. I think in past matchups for DC, there has been a more clear path to victory on paper when you break sure. down the two fighters. And in this particular matchup, you think that even though Stipe hasn't faced, faced a wrestler of DC's quality, that is DC going to be able to control this guy on the ground and tire this guy who maybe is not on a Cain Velazquez cardio level necessarily, but look what Stipe did to Francis Ngannou, right? That required a lot of energy, a lot of He might be, energy. though. That's the thing. He might. Yeah. He might be. Well, right. I mean, that, that fight against Ngannou, uh, you look at his fights against Junior Dos Santos, I mean, just ridiculous. And one thing, too, that we mentioned on the broadcast leading up to the fight between Stipe and Francis Ngannou the Miocic people, you know, they don't speak or toot their own horn. or You know, they're not loud people inherently. Yeah. But he knocked out eight people in two weeks leading up to that Ngannou fight in training. And that just wasn't something that was happening training camp in and training camp out for Stipe. So he is still an evolving, developing heavyweight that in theory is going to put his best foot forward and put out the best version on July 7th against Daniel Cormier, who just turned 39, I believe, back in March. So, hey, I'm not doubting DC. You can be sure. I certainly know him better in this equation than I do Stipe. But I just think that uh, if Daniel Cormier is able to 
become a two-division champion simultaneously at light heavyweight and heavyweight here in 20 days. We're going to be talking about arguably the greatest mixed martial artist 